What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode four of Batten and Chatten with your favorite people talking baseball. My name is Brandon Gerard Natalie. I'm here with Nicholas A. File and Dennis Tui. Fellas, how you guys doing today on this smoky, unfor- you know, unfortunately, it's unfortunate smoky Wednesday night? Yeah, it's just nasty out there. Um, anyone listening out there, stay indoors as much as you can. But uh, definitely stay inside most of the day. Yankee game got postponed, so there's none of that this uh, tonight. But yeah, it's it's disgusting out there, boys. That's that's all I can really say. Stay indoors. Dennis? Yeah, I mean, what Nick said, and of course, I, I feel bad for our uh, – Listeners, friends, whoever in Canada, yep. obviously they're they're getting the brunt of it. And also on a somber note, not sure if you guys are wrestling fans. R.I.P. The Iron Sheik. I, don't I heard about that, that earlier oh, today. I saw about that wrestling piece. So rip Iron right, Sheik, sure. man. Except piece. for that, I'm chilling, bro. I got I'm got the finals on right here. Nuggets are up eighteen. Math not my strong suit. <laughs> <So> <laughs> it took me a second there. Does Jokic have a triple double already? I think so. Wow, I'm yeah, not even kidding. Insane. At one point, he had a double double in uh, the second quarter with six assists. He's so. insane. It's <laughs> insane. If the finals is it's pretty good so far. I know. Is it game three? It's game three, game right? Three. Game three. In yeah, Miami. I remember. Um, I was watching the first game, the second game actually. So it was pretty impressive. Uh, so watch out for Miami. Miami is a big sleeper team, the eighth seed. You know, they've shocked a lot of people. They almost choked. They almost became the next Atlanta Falcons. They almost joined that list, but now they uh you know, they finally they beat those ac- accusations and now they're they're just the my they're just the Miami Heat now. There's a plane. Yeah. I mean, I know Golden State's on that list. Uh the Cleveland Guardians. Um a bunch of other teams from the list from the meme with the Falcons. Yeah. A certain New York team is probably very, very, very grateful that it happened pre social media. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you guys. I'll, I'll let you guys at home think of that. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's still, ugh. Dennis is already making me depressed. Uh, man. Already, I feel like I know. I, I definitely know what it is. Yes, I wish I, I would. I would definitely pull it up right now because I have the. I actually have a clip of it ready to go too, so I could definitely <laughs> could pull it up if I wanted to. So I was trolling my my two Yankee friends. They like they like to troll me as a Met fan, and I'm like, I'm like, all right, settle down now. Remember what happened in 04? Yeah, I said it. And I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I mean, and I just pulled that up. Look, I'm convinced what? Dave Roberts is the Dark Lord Voldemort. I really am. <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude was he's, he's he's an okay manager. He wasn't really great as a player, and then just you know has the biggest stolen base in the history of the sport. You know. Yep. Same. Right, yeah, he was a big part of that, that um, that ALCS. Yep, um, a huge part. I can't imagine part. what it was like at that time. I mean, I just remember watching before we get into the show. I remember them showing a Rod and his reaction because I forgot that was his first year with the team. Yep. So that was, and he was supposed was, to go to Boston. Uh, right for Manny Ramirez. For Manny Ramirez. Really? Wow! Imagine Manny Ramirez being a, a Yankee. He would have been a Ranger. Oh, he would have been Ranger, right? Okay, Ranger. right. My bad, because I remember he was on Texas too. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was yeah. before we get into it. Just uh, yeah, I can't imagine. You know, good for Boston. Though. I mean, they broke the curse of the great Bambino, not the great Brandino, but the great Bambino. <laughs> Is that you? Are you the Brandino? The brand. The brand you know, how'd you know? Wow. <laughs> what made you guess that? What made you guess that? <laughs> but uh. You know, I can't, you know, obviously that's just, you know, what a miraculous way. You would have thought the Red Sox, like the Jets, would have gone through another bad year. And the way they did it, you know, that's to me remarkable. But yeah. anyways, you know what? Like I said, this ain't the, Bo- this ain't the Boston Sports Channel. This is Batten and Chatten here on the Eastern Observer. So here we go. Um, honestly, I know we start off with talking about the Mets and the Yankees, but I feel like this is some breaking news we do got to talk about. I know you guys know what I'm talking about as my eyes pop up. Because that's just eye popping news. Jacob Degrom. So originally he was supposed to go on this. It was Monday. It was reported he was going to go on the sixty day injured list. Now he is now going undergoing Tommy John surgery, ending his two thousand twenty three season, and he is most likely going to miss most of the two thousand twenty four season. 
Huge crushing blow to the Rangers, who are second in the league right now, in the American League for record. I know they were 40 and 20 entering today. The GM, Chris Young, built together a great team. Everyone's been raving about them. The fact that there was 68 and 94 last year to now second in the American League, it's it's insane. Beating the Astros, like the Astros are now second behind them. That's insane. And I know it's a devastating blow, crushing blow that is just, you know, just sad because DeGrom, as a Met fan, I have to say, Jacob DeGrom, he's one of the best players that I've ever watched play. And especially to say he was in a Met uniform, it's remarkable. So I remember watching R.A. Dickey. I've seen Matt Harvey. I've seen Bartolo Colon. I've seen Syndergaard. I've seen Wheeler. I've seen Matt. Johan. I've seen... I haven't seen Johan. Well, I've watched... I haven't seen him live, but I did watch... I did watch I No Hitter. So I've seen... A, the Mets are definitely known throughout, for, throughout history for their pitching because they've had some great pitching. Oh, you know, yeah, you could go some, you know. back you to Seaver. Not yeah. even. You could go even further back. Oh, my God, I'm forgetting his name. He just passed away, too. The uh, broadcaster, uh, Roger Craig. Yep. Oh, yeah, first, Roger Craig. Like their first real guy in that expansion. First, draft. first original man, yeah. Rest in peace to yeah. Roger Craig. We'll talk about that him. Is Jerry yeah. Kuzman. Sid, yeah, Jerry Kuzman. Sid Fernandez, right? Sid Fernandez, Why, yeah, Ron Why Darling. Ron Darling, David oh, Cohn before he became a Yankee. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, Dwight Gooden. Yeah, always, Doc. Always Kyle really Leiter, good pitchers. You know. Mike, Pelfrey? Martinez, yeah. Mike, Mike Pelfrey. Mike Pelfrey. <laughs> we'll talk about Mike Pelfrey. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's karma for me bringing up the the uh the Red Sox, I understand. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you got to get Take you back. That. The... Take that. Yeah. <laughs> You got me. Like we're not talking about outfielders, so I was like, bring up Jason Bay. Uh, if you want to bring up, uh, if you want to bring out infielders, you might as well bring up a Luis Castillo. So yeah, I got myself, I got myself there. <laughs> um, but uh, so yeah, so like, you know, Jake. When I obviously when you think of next great Met, Mets pitching, Jacob Degrom is probably the next, the first person you want to talk about. Not even Tom well, Seaver. One of the best peaks of all time, man. And you know, it was just kind of. So recent too. I mean, what 2019, 2018? He won the 2018, back to back 2019, side. yeah. Yeah, I remember 2018, like uh, you know, it was yesterday. 2017, he was like average. I remember against Texas, they show him in the dugout where he looks all frustrated because it was against Texas too, where he gave up the um, the you know, the runs. Uh, like he just had a bad start, and you see Terry Collins confronting him, just like comforting him, making sure he's okay, you know, trying to get him to shake off this start, you know, and then next year has probably arguably one of the best seasons for a pitcher ever, for as long as the MLB has existed. 1.7 ERA. I know he was 10-9. and nine. He almost didn't have a win record, like a win-loss record. He almost had, like, you know, he was close to that, but the Mets came through for him, even though they weren't coming through in 2018 that whole year because they couldn't. The offense was non-existent. Yep. That's he why had no DeGrom had – Yeah, he had no run support, probably the worst. And that's what sucks because DeGrom, all his career, probably had no run support. Which yeah. goes to show about the Mets offense throughout his time. You know? And it, it really stinks because, you know, like you said, you know, he had uh, that weak run support in his career with the Mets. Look at this Rangers team now, man. If he was healthy, jeez, that team just generates runs. It's just it's, – it's a big blow. I mean, he finally got that run support from the best offensive team in baseball right now. And uh, – I, I just want to see a full season of that. It, it's just a big blow for not just Ranger fans or, you know, Mets fans who still have love for DeGrom. It's a huge blow for baseball in general, man. It sucks. Yeah. Highest scoring offense in the league right now is Texas. Yep. They have 386, Rays have 366. Texas is insane uh, this year, man. Finally gets the run support, and he's not even on the team. And – I mean, let's be honest. Their core of Marcus Simeon and Corey Seager ain't getting any younger. Yeah, now this is kind of like this no, is their I window mean, now. Their average age is for hitters is twenty seven point three. Oh, I'm sorry, that's wrong. It's uh, twenty eight point four. Excuse me. Yeah, you know, it's right, right there alone. You're creating a window now for a uh, chance at a championship. Yeah. I mean, either way, I mean, without the Grom on the Ross on the rotation, I know they got Avaldi, they got um, Andrew, they Heaney, got Andrew Heaney, Martin Perez, uh, John Gray. If I'm correct, right? John Gray, he's having a pretty John good Gray. year. Yeah, 
So, I mean, either way, like the Rangers, without DeGrom, they should be a set team, right? They're all like a legit for real team. They've been doing great. They've been doing great without them, you know? So, I mean, like, it's a big blow regardless, but like still, it's like, you know, we still got the trade deadline. They can make another move for a uh, starting pitcher. So, we'll see what happens there. But yeah, I mean, just imagine this team with like a healthy, you know, in shape DeGrom just shoving night in, night out. It's, it's unfair. Yeah, it just happens. Yeah. That's baseball. It's a long season, though, man. That is also true. It's it's a long season. And, um, you know, last year, I mean, Jonah Heim has been raking for them this year, but last year, second half of the season, he was not nearly as good as he was in the first half. He had a 262 batting average in the first half pre-All-Star break. Then a 181. The OBP dropped significantly from 313 to 279. Slugging dropped from 467 to 311. So, I mean, who knows if that's sustainable. Right now, he's the best catcher in the American League offensively. Or certainly among the top, maybe if you want to put Adley Rutschman ahead of him, sure. But other players, Corey Seager isn't exactly a hallmark for uh, health. Nick Evaldi's had some injuries over the years. Who knows if this rookie, Josh Jung, 25-year-old third base rookie, who knows if he's for real for an entire season. Adelise Garcia goes through stretches at times. Yep. So, I don't know. I I think the Astros are going to win the division. Uh, I just – Okay. At this point, okay. they're the proven team, and they, they, they kind of got like that Jason Voorhees to them that it's just – they don't they don't stay down no matter what you do. They they just constantly get right. back up. Right yeah. when you think they're out of it, if that they come right back and get you and they bite you right there. It's like I, I, right. I swear, like Michael Cole, some, yeah. Yeah, they could take some kid from Walmart and turn him into a freaking all star. Exactly. <laughs> it's you know, Michael, yeah. I I agree because you know, as a Yankees fan, I think we've seen it firsthand with the Astros. They just don't back down, they don't go away. But um I'm praying, I'm hoping that the Texas Rangers just keep doing this. I want some fresh blood out of the AL West, Me help too. the Yankees out a little bit here. But, um, yeah, I, I think my gut's telling me, like, my heart's telling me Texas Rangers win the division, make a nice playoff run. My brain's telling me, though, Astros are going to win the division by, like, a few games right at the end, just going to crush Rangers fans' souls. Really? You Pro- think that's probably? Gonna probably beat them in the playoffs or whatever, make it further than them in the playoffs. That's just my gut feeling because it's I mean, just – it's the Astros, man. It's like Lance, the Patriots. Lance McCullers and Michael Brantley haven't played a second this season. The Astros are only four and a half games out. Yeah, Jose Altuve is hurt now. He only played, what, a week, week and a half before getting hurt again? I think he only back four, tonight, but... four and a half games out. So Yeah, it's going to be close. And like what you else know, was, yeah. I'm sorry. Like we that. just said, we uh they lost the Grom. That's a huge loss. So, I mean, like that's that that's your you know, you spent bread on this guy, you spent a lot of money on this guy, be your yeah, too. uninsured money too. Yeah, so I mean uh, uninsured money. It's a big loss for them. So like I think yeah. right. I think what's going on, I mean, like look you look at the Mets last year. The Mets was still doing great without him regardless, and he didn't pitch till what, August? So it's the same thing with yes. Texas, and Texas is probably, I'm not, you know, like I said, I'm not denying the Mets last year of their talent, but compared to the Texas Rangers this year, they're probably way better than the, what the Mets were last year. Now, the Mets were a great team, but Texas just seems like an all-around stacked ball club. Yeah. You know, so, you know, it should be interesting to see, you know, how they go about it, but I think we already know how they're going to go about it because they've already proven that they can win without them. And it's, yep. I think what also sucks about the DeGrom contract, so, the signing, is that, like, yeah, I mean, he's not going to play, but a lot of that money is uninsured. Like, you knew what you were getting into. There's a reason why teams were hesitant with signing him. There's a reason why the Mets weren't willing to extend him long term. They offered him maybe like a three-year, $125, $120 million contract, if I'm correct. They weren't offering him what Texas was offering. It was rumored that he was going to come back to the Mets, but... All along, you know, because like they said, like, you know, Mets fans could think all they want. He's not coming back. He wasn't coming back. We just didn't want to believe it, you know. 
because yeah. a beloved figure, you know, it's like when Tavares went for the Islanders, you know, or yeah. it's when, you know, I'm trying to think of another comparison, but that's the first, you know, or like when Revis went to the Patriots, yeah. you know, Brandon, stuff like that. I, I kind of want to ask you about that because you're a Met fan. I, I mean, really, the only the only two Met players to have great careers end to end for the Mets is David Wright and Ed Cranepool. So, as a Met fan, what do you think about that? Because, like the Yankees, we have a ton of guys, and other teams have a ton of guys. But the Mets, it, it seems like all their guys at some point just go off somewhere. Is how, how do you feel about that? You know, Dennis and D Train, my man. For you know, I could call you D Train, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I have to say that is a great question that I'm surprised you never asked me a long time ago. Because honestly, it's something we we we've, we've never came to realize. I wish I could tell you. You know what? It's ha- it's not a surprise because with with Tom Seaver, it happened the same way that he wasn't treated right, and any MLB baseball fan could tell you that. Not even a Met fan. Mm-hmm. Because when I read the Tom Seaver book, it was, you know, they just harassed him. The, you know, the, the, the chairman at the time, um, you know, he just, he was kind of trying to get him out of town. And the way it happened was what got Seaver at finally out of town was someone like, cause he had a lot of, whoever was the chairman had a lot of control of the, of the news of the media at the time. And he said, you know, he made up a, a story that, that, um, Nancy Seaver was jealous of Nolan Ryan's wife of something. And then like Seaver even said it. Cause like someone was calling him to like, like what's going on? Like what now? Like what, what, what else could be going on? He heard about that and he called the PR right away and he said, get me out of here. Like that was, and then next thing you know, a couple of days later he was traded to the Reds. So what I'm trying to get at is like, I think the Mets just don't know how to maybe treat the quality players at the end of their career. Because you can see it's it's shown whether it's, you know, and I, I get it. I mean, with Dwight Gooden and Daryl Sharber, I mean, those are players that have, you know, ooh, uh, did you guys hear anything when I touched the mic? Right, cool. No, you're yeah. good. I don't know. It, it's it's hard to explain. I mean, you look at Gary Carter, you know, he didn't end his career as a Met. Or actually, no, I think yeah. he didn't. No. Well, he didn't, he didn't but, start it as a Met, though. No, he, he was started an expo. with Montreal, yeah. He was an expo. Keith Fernandez played like another year in Cleveland. He didn't, you know, yeah. he wasn't a Met long term. Mook, yeah. you know, Howard Johnson didn't stay. You know, you know did Al Eider. Nails. Was it Reyes? You know, he left and then he Let came back. They let, they let Kevin Mitchell go. Yeah. In I don't know why. He won an MVP in 87 yeah. or 88. 89, I think. Yeah, he went nuts. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why they, they let him go. That was probably the stupidest so thing I think, they ever I think did. it was some off field concerns with, I guess, who he was hanging out with. But Mike Piazza didn't just, even. It was weird. Yeah, yeah. He, was, he was on the Padres for that year or two. At the end of his yeah. career, just, it was it was always something that that it just struck me odd is with the Mets is it's a trend as long as the franchise that their guys just for some reason they just can't keep them for their yeah. own careers. I mean, it's, it happens, you know. It's just it's just baseball. I I wish I could really tell you, but I mean it doesn't seem. But I could just name you the players that they've. That haven't you know finished their career as a Met? Do, it happens, do we? Yeah, you know. Do we think this changes in the Steve Cohen era? Like, I mean, I this guy's that, a yeah. beast. This guy's a beast with uh, all these free agent signs. So I mean, like, I'm hoping for Mets fans' sakes. You know, Pete Alonso is the guy that's you know next up. You know, from David Wright. I thought Pete Alonso be a career Met. You know, I, I think Pete Alonso definitely has a shot of being a career Met. Yeah, I. Absolutely think it changes. I think we've seen it already with Jeff McNeil's extension and Brandon Nimmo's extension. And I think if the Mets front office wanted to play like the Braves and the Astros and some of these other teams, some of these more elite teams in the league, they would extend Pete Alonso yesterday. Yeah. You know, and, and and get, him, get him cheaper, especially now. I mean, knock on wood. He might win the National League MVP. Yep. Um, that average speaks otherwise, but I mean, who needs? I mean, he's hitting over two hundred, and and he's he's like an automatic home run. I yeah. mean, two thirty, yeah, two thirty three. Yeah, but you'll take that with almost twenty five homers at this point in the season, right? He's got what twenty one, twenty two. 
20, uh, 21. Not to give Brandon a heart attack, but I'm sure he knows right. He did get hurt today, too. Uh, but I he think did, but right. apparently the x rays were negative. Yeah, so, uh, they came back. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. he should be all right. First he should inning, be right? all right. Yeah. So uh, to end your question on that and um, to wrap up the Jacob DeGrom topic, um, I, I do hopefully it changes because, yeah, like we saw with Nimmo, McNeil. Um, they should have extended Alonzo a long time ago. Um, cause now his price tag is going to keep going up and you're going to end up in like an Aaron judge situation. And if right. it were come to that, he will stay as a Met. I don't see, I don't know where the other team he would go, but I think, you know, he would end up being staying with the Mets. You would think it would be a situation where he would leave, but like judge, he will stay true to his roots and he will stay a New York Met. He has a lot embedded to the organization. He's a franchise player. You know, it's just, you know, how, how do you say no to that? And uh, with Jacob DeGrom, it sucks. I wish him the best of luck because he had a great career with the Mets. And, you know, I don't know if he's going to want to go, like like Dennis has been mentioning to me in the past couple of days, the John Smoltz world, world where he should be a closer. I don't Not know how gonna, this, is his second, this is his second Tommy John surgery because he had the Tommy John surgery in 2011 before coming three years before making his debut. That's why he made his debut at 20, 26 instead of like an – Early pitcher at like 24 or 23, you know, it's yeah. a time for him to come back. Yeah, two Tommy Johns is rough, no matter how you put it. But, yeah, I didn't even think about that, actually. Uh, the John Smoltz role becoming a closer. I mean, who's their closer now? Is it Will Smith? Yeah. Um, I mean, Will Smith, he's, he's a stud in the ninth. But the Grom in the ninth is a scary thought. I mean, that's a good idea. I didn't, I didn't even think about that. Well, I mean, that's the old school closer thing. I mean yeah. – that's what they used to do is they would take guys that couldn't start anymore and they'd have them close three innings. It's what Mariano Rivera did. It's what Dennis Eckersley did. Yep. You want to go back to the fifties, but Hoyt Wilhelm did yeah. <laughs> but like, I mean, I, I think it makes so much sense for him. It really does. He can't stay healthy. And that's ridiculous. 48 million is ridiculous for a closer, but look, I've been saying it for years. Like once again, I, I said this at work earlier and a few of my friends left. I get it. I'm not a peak athlete, so this is going to sound a little tone deaf to say, but he's he just looks a lot smaller than a lot of other power pitchers in terms of his frame. You know, like you think of Tom Seaver, Nolan Ryan, Garrett Cole, Roger Clemens. Those were stocky guys. Justin Verlander. They, they got a little bulk to them. You know what Randy I mean? Randy Johnson. I don't know if you said Randy Johnson. Yeah. Randy Someone Johnson, commented that on Randy Instagram. Johnson was, yeah. Randy Johnson was wiry, but he was 6'10". So when he's pitching, he's got those long arms and a long stride. The ball is that much closer to you. Do you get what I mean? So even if – Right. Like, it, it's just a shorter distance. You get what I'm saying? It's a shorter yeah. distance, and it looks faster because of that. But DeGrom doesn't have that luxury because – not everybody can be 6'10", hard to believe. <laughs> but yeah. it's it's something that always stuck out to me. And another thing that always stuck out to me with him when he was in New York, obviously I don't watch as many of his games in Texas, and I was hoping this would be solved with Maddox becoming their new pitching coach down there in Texas, leaving St. Louis. He was always throwing 100 miles an hour to Grom. And the great pitchers, the Pedros, the – the CCs, the yeah. Johans, they knew how to change, dial it up and dial it back, depending on the at bat, to maximize their starts. And a lot of guys, they can't make that adjustment. Kerry Wood couldn't. Kevin Brown couldn't. It's it's a tale as old as time, and it's it's going to be another. It's a it's a great career that's never going to be the same, and it sucks. <laughs> Yeah, um, because you know, two time Tommy John's. It's not easy to come back. I know one pitcher that came back from Tommy John. Um, I know he was a relief pitcher. But I don't know if you guys remember Bobby Parnell. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I remember the name, but I, I don't. I'm not like closer, right? He was a closer for the Mets in like the early two, 2010s. Yeah, um, and he had Tommy John surgery. I think around t- 2014, so he didn't come back till the 2015 season. And he was he was not the same. He was anytime he came up, there's a guaranteed run given. He was just not the same. Um, yeah. And I don't think the, I don't think he was sawn after. Like I don't think he was. You know, and it sucked because I mean 
I'm already hearing my dad, you know, cursing on the TV because because they kept him in, you know, about you know, yelling about Terry Collins and why why keeping Bobby Parnell and well, <laughs> Granted, I wish I could tell you. Yeah, I wish I could tell Granted, you. Dad. I know we only we spent almost a half hour on this subject already. We have other topics, but. It is so much more different now than it used to be with those surgeries, man. I remember yeah. when I when I was like in middle school, you heard Tommy John. That was a death sentence. That was Career ten under. years ago. You know, like uh, like I remember like a girl I went to high school with, like her brother had Tommy John surgery when he was in the minors. The I know club. who you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, and like I, I remember she said, like, yeah, he's he's rehabbing from Tommy John. I saw the look on her face. I felt so bad for her. Oh because wow! She was really? Like, she was yeah. She was like she was like. Hopefully he gets back to it, but she kind of knew that that was it. And nowadays, like, find a pitcher in the league who hasn't had it. Yeah, you know, like it's it just, is what it is. Just look just at Justin wa- Verlander. Yeah, I was about to say Ver- <laughs> Verlander just want to saw you on after having T- TGS. Yeah, man. Yeah, How old and is he's he? you know forty. He's like about to be forty. Yeah, and he's he pitched seven innings, eight innings this year. He's he's had inconsistent starts. But he's still honest. There's times he's still the same pitcher he was when he was with Detroit, when he was with Houston. Justin Verlander is still him. Yeah, he's he still is. him. <laughs> um, but yeah, so well wishes to Jacob Degrom. We wish you nothing but the best on recovery, and hopefully you come back to what you were in 2025, most likely, or in the middle of 2024. We will find out. Um, so now let's talk about the Mets quick. Um, a great sweep by the Phillies last week. Um, unfortunately, they did get swept by the Toronto Blue Jays, and they're on the verge of getting swept now by their division rival, the Atlanta Braves. <sighs> I don't, you know, and I remember hearing you know, Keith Fernandez say, it, like, you know, you can't have a four to one lead. This was last night because you know the Braves are that team that they're going to come back. You can't be, get comfortable with a four to one lead. And what do you know? The Braves come back and they won yesterday. Same thing with today. Met, they're up again, four to one, and now they lost seven to five. And I don't know what is up with. I was just talking to Nick about this before the show. Adam Montevino, what the heck? I feel like anytime the game is blown by the Mets, he's the pitcher. I don't understand. He's either lights out or he'll give up the game. And I don't understand. Like he is a, I want to like him, but there's times where he makes me question why do the Mets keep bringing him out there? Your guess is as good as mine because I noticed that as well. And, Look, you watch a lot more Mets games than I would, so you will probably be the the better authority on it. But I I don't get it. I'm gonna be honest. When he was on the Yankees, I never saw him as a closer. I always saw him as like a good setup man, kind of you know middle relief type role. You know, just an arm to throw out there. Yeah. I, I never saw him. I mean, he's he's had 38 career saves. 33 of those are before this were before this season. He's been in the league since 2010. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, at some point, he's 37 years old now. At some point, the back of the trading card doesn't lie. His highest total, two totals of his career was 11 in 2021 for Boston and seven for Colorado in 2016. It's just, I I don't get it. I I don't get you. To your point, Brandon, I, I don't get their fascination with it. I don't. 413 mm-hmm. ER, right? And that's hyperinflated a lot with uh, relievers. One bad inning, okay. But uh, I don't know. I, I just don't understand it, man. I really don't. Yeah. An- another funny trend I'm kind of looking at, I don't know if it means anything, but I'm comparing his New York tenures. His first year with the Yankees, phenomenal. You know, one 190 ERA, 88 strikeouts. You know, the next season was the COVID year, or whatever. But you know, five, eight, nine year RA as a reliever. Come on, that's just that's horrible. So now I'm looking at his Mets career. He was pretty good last year, from what I'm looking at. And then this year, you know, like Brian said, he's kind of like, you know, what's going on here? So has his role changed? Does he pitch a different inning now compared to last year, or is it he's kind of still in the similar role as last year? I was kind of still in the similar role as last year. I mean, he's. Mostly yeah, so. would be pitching in the late innings. Like I believe the home run he gave up to Michael Harris tonight was it was the eighth inning. So um, you know, I believe he sometimes he'll close out the game for the Mets, but not as much. Yeah. But to, to what Dennis was saying, he should be a relief, you know, close setup guy. That's what they try to make him to be. You yeah. know, it's hard. And but, in, in his defense, yeah. 
So he finished 19 games last year for the Mets, and he's finished 12 already this season. And yeah. in his defense, yeah, he he's 37 years old. David Robertson is 38. They're missing Edwin Diaz. They need these guys to step up. Yeah. And if I was a Mets fan, if I was a Mets fan, I'd be alarmed by how much they're relying on these guys this early into a long, grueling season. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, no. at the deadline, they gotta they gotta look for moves. And <sighs> you heard Kansas City shopping around Chapman. I know. I was just I just thought the same thing. I mean, Chapman back it's, to New York. It is a high wire move. It is. It would not be favorable for WFAN or ESPN Radio or the Daily News, but it's a legitimate. It's a legitimate thought you got to have if you're them. My because, question uh, is, yeah, no. My question is, yeah. do you think? I I don't know if he's willing to really handle New York. It, it, last time he was here, I mean, didn't really work out necessarily. Okay, but he could also look. I don't know the guy, but he could also flip it as saying, "I could say f you to the Yankees." Yeah, for more or less. <laughs> for more or less cutting him because they left him off the roster. You know, yes, did he quit on the team? Yes, but, I mean, a buddy of mine once quit working with me because he knew he was going to get fired when he showed up. (laughs) So, like, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I was a man when it happened. The revenge tour is real. The revenge tour is real. The revenge tour at Chapman is real. I I saw it, and that was something, yeah, um, you know, I would love to welcome in Chapman. And I definitely do agree with what Dennis is saying. The um, the Mets, they definitely need to make a move for a closer. It, it, they could happen now, honestly. What Billy Eppley should be saying is, yeah, we're using our, these guys a lot. They're up in age. We're using them a sh- sh- shoot ton than we need to. A shoot. So you almost caught me there. We're using them more times than we already need. So, you know, do you make that switch now so they're not gassed up at the end of the season? You know, so a few. Oh, sorry, my bad. Uh, a few things come to my mind though. So I'm looking at the stands right now. Um, Mets are seven and a half out of the division uh, behind the Braves. I mean, do they even try to trade for a close at the deadline? Like, if they're not even in contention, is is that a is that a possibility? I know I know Steve Cohen's an animal. I know he's gonna want to put a wooden team out there regardless. But I mean. You know, the Mets, what, they've lost five straight now? Is it even worth trading for a closer at this point? I mean, that's things I mean, it's only the Mets got to think about. Dude, with the age of this team, you got to go all in. Yeah, yeah I guess so. I you got to go all yes, in, so. man. I know the Cle- – and the other thought that came to my mind was the Cleveland Indians. I mean, I know they were talking about sh- uh, Shop and Bieber. Is uh, Class A or Class A, I think, if I'm saying that right, the closer yeah, there Class in Cleveland. A. Closer. You know, is he available? I mean, that's that could be huge for the Mets too. If he's on, uh, if he's on the chopping block for Cleveland, I mean, the Mets definitely got some options there, like Chapman. We said Classe. So, a lot of interesting stuff's gonna happen July thirty first. That's for sure. One mm-hmm. name that I like to throw out there: another old guy, which is kind of the Achilles heel of the Mets right now. Thirty seven years old, Daniel Bard from the Colorado Rockies. Yeah. A, a one dot ERA right now. Wow. Gonna get it. Gonna be an all star this year. I guess he wasn't last year. That's, I mean, a crime. If I've ever seen it, he was great last year. Got MVP votes, but not an all star. Go figure. A one dot oh four ERA. Only 17 innings pitched. He did have some time off to begin the season, kind of working through a mental block that he had picked up in the WBC where he struggled mightily for Team USA. But 37 years old and a legitimate closer who's closed games for the Rockies the past couple of seasons. Has he had the big games of a David Robertson? No. But, hey, you got if, desperate times call for drastic measures, and I don't know who else is going to be available for them. Here's another guy that came to my mind. And I'm going back to the AL Central here. Just came back. He's on a pretty lackluster team. Liam Hendricks, is that an option too? I mean, that could be an option. No, he was an option in the offseason. I don't know what Chicago's going to do this deadline, but they got to do son. I mean, granted, they just beat the Yankees, so I really can't talk too much. But, uh, <laughs> you know, they they got to sell eventually too. If this continues, you know, they have been 
pretty dreadful this year. Mm. I mean, four, four I, games out of division, though. So, I mean, I, I don't know. It's going to be. Four games out of a really bad division. Yeah, really hard. Saying what we're all yep. thinking. Saying what yep. we're all thinking. Yep. The problem is their guys can't stay healthy either. That's it seems like every other day I see Eloy or Luis Robert get hurt. Yep. And also, I, I don't want to. I don't want to get a grim or whatever. He's been with the White Sox for a while. Obviously, he was dealing with his um, with his cancer diagnosis, and he's back, and that's awesome. But he want to leave Chicago with his family. Yeah, that's also true. I don't know if true. treatments or whatever. Look, I I don't know. I don't have information on that, but maybe uh, as a comfort thing. Maybe I mean, he is their guy. Yeah, he he really is their guy. So. I don't know. Then again, um, I don't know if the Mets are thinking the idea that Edwin Diaz is going to come back. Because there's some reports saying that he might have a shot to come back this season. So I don't know if the Mets are going to try to rely on that. That would be a Met thing for them to do. You know? The good thing is he's coming back from a leg injury, not an arm injury, and he's a pitcher. Yeah. But at the same time, too, do you really want to rush him back? No. Not at all. I don't want to Did rush them back. You know what I mean? Thing. Like, it would be a Mets thing for them to do to to rush them back, which I don't want them to do. Yeah. So interesting. It's yeah. definitely interesting. It's very, very interesting stuff. But um, you know, hopefully, let's see. We'll see what the Mets do. Uh, one more Met topic. The Mets were giving top prospect Ronnie Mauricio reps in left field. And now the you know the infield is crowded already with you know Lindor, Alonso, McNeil, Beatty, you got Escobar, Vientos. Um, in his career in the minors, he's played second base, third baseman, and shortstop. Now GM Billy Eppler said that you know he wants to take advantage of Mauricio's athletic system so that he could potentially play you know every every day when he gets to the majors. So I gotta ask, you know, is this the best move for Mauricio, or do you think the Mets are trying to rush him too quickly? Like, do you think it's it's right for to take a player out of position just to get him into the majors? It's a good question. I mean, yeah. From my standpoint, I mean, this is just personal. I mean, I can't speak for most of these guys. Like, you know, the Yankees had Oswaldo Cabrera playing everywhere last year, but yes. me personally, I, I, I'm a lefty, so I throw a lefty, whatever. I was so comfortable playing center field and right field. That was it. Left field, no go. Center field was my thing. I mean, sorry. Left field and center field. Right field, not my go-to, not my forte. But, yeah, I mean, a lot of comfortability goes into that, I guess. I mean, I'm sure everyone's different. Some guys just have that dog in them where it's like, can you play third? I'll play third. Second base, you got it. Left field, center. I mean, it really depends, I guess. Your mentality at that point. I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but that's my mentality now. Uh, man, I throw lefty. I'm not playing shortstop. I'm not playing third base. Get out of here. But yeah, that's. I think it really depends on the player at that point. I agree with Nick. It definitely depends on the player. One thing I've noticed just around the league, from what seems to be different from when I was a kid, was just it's a much more fluid league in terms of guys playing multiple positions. I think this is kind of the era we're in. IKF started as a catcher, then became a shortstop, then became an outfielder, then was a second baseman, then was a third baseman. He's really? been all over. Yeah, he's had a wild career in terms and, of positions. He's only 26 years old, 27 years old. And his mentality is team first, win first. That's it. So yeah. That, uh, that's, yeah. that's what I'm talking about, the mentality of who you are, what you're willing to do for the team. Yeah. DJ LeMay, you – LeMayu, yeah, and you know, the Yankees are just blessed with all these super yeah. utility guys. Joey, crazy. Joey Wendell with Tampa for a while. Joey so many guys that could play multiple positions. And hey man, if it's gonna get them in the if he's if it's gonna get him in the league, what's he gonna do? Say no? Chris Taylor. That that's a Chris guy. Chris Taylor. Yeah, Dodgers. That that's the first guy I think of. Yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah. BJ Serhoff. Yep. BJ Serhoff. <laughs> Played everywhere. Yep. Greg Biggio. Craig, yeah, uh, Biggio, catcher, yeah, catcher, like, short, second base. It yeah. just, it just is what it is, man. It's, it's, yeah, get with it. I agree. I mean, you look at the Mets. You look at Jeff McNeil. 
There was no room yeah. for him in the infield, so they moved him to the. They said, you know, you got to move to the outfield, and he was like, okay. He's been okay, you know. It didn't work out for Dom Smith because Dom Smith is, you know, he's now in the Nationals. You know, that was a bad experiment. Him in the outfield. Some players yeah. are just true first basemen. He was not an outfielder. I understand what they're trying to do because, but honestly, his bat didn't. Li- Once they made the change positions, his bat didn't live up. Um, but some players it works out. Depends on depends on the player. And like yeah. you guys said, if, if the player, you know, like IKF said, team first, player last mentality. If if Mauricio wants to get into, the league, you know, for his sake, for the player's sake, if he wants to get into the league, and then for the team's sake, to play at their position, he's going to have to do it. I think he could do it, you know. Um, yeah. You know, just depends, you know, because there's no room in the infields. But if they can find a way to get his bat in the lineup, maybe it'll work out. We'll see. He's regarded as like a high prospect, so... It, if the Mets ever want to make a high trade move at the deadline or in the offseason, he's one of he would be one of the first pieces to get traded. So we shall see. Um now let's move on to the Yankees. A lot of players fortunately there's a lot of players now heading on to the IL. Um and then there is one player that returned. We will get let's but let's get to the players that are now scheduled to hit. You got Nestor Cortez, nasty Nestor. He's on the IL oh, now. Right. Shoulder injury. Aaron Judge, after crashing into the uh, left field wall, the right field wall uh, versus the LA Dodgers, he is now headed down to the injured list. Fellas, how we feeling? Awful. Sucks. That's it. <laughs> I, Anybody but Judge. Look. Anybody but Judge. Yeah. I'll give my firstborn son. Yep. It, <laughs> it sucks too because it's like we just got. Donaldson, Stanton, Tommy Canley back, and we get we get Stan and Judge. We get that awesome duo for one game. Boom, Judge Dio. It's like, oh, it's so it's like nails on chalkboard, man. It just sucks. Oh, man. But from what I've been reading, though, Cortez and Judge should be, you know, I say okay, but they're on the IL, but should be the minimum stays. I hope. Um, you know, it's like this team can't catch a break. Just being at full strength, it just mm. flat out sucks. It's awful. Just like Dennis said, it's awful. That's really pretty much to it. I mean, at least Judge made a great play to get to the aisle. That's, that's the only positive. That was a great play. That, that was but, a great uh, play. I mean, you know, I saw a stat recently where the Yankees' offense is nowhere near as good without Judge in the lineup. So that's why he's the MVP. Uh, That's why he's the might, king. Uh, yeah, it's just gonna. It might be a little rough without him. You know, we kind of saw that against the White Sox. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's gonna be. It's not gonna be good. I feel uh, like a Clippers yeah. fan, man. I feel like a Clippers fan. That's one. Two. Jake Bowers needs to step up. Cabrera needs to step up. Although he got sent down, then he's back. He's back. Greg, yeah. Greg Allen's hurt. Yeah, and he got her. Volpe needs to step up. Bader needs to step up. And Donaldson, hopefully, he can keep this going, man. Donaldson's hot right now. Going. Three home hopefully runs can, since returning. Hopefully, he can bring the rain and get rid of this ash in New York. I exactly. mean, we, we yeah. need it. We need it. Yeah. Two different ways. We, we need it on the field. And once again, to bring her a rain, please. And I yes. think the guy who the clubhouse needs to look up to and he needs to provide right now and go back to his MVP form. While judges out to Stanton, I think Stan needs to be. He's got to take over here. I I always look at him as like if there was like assistant captains, like there wasn't hockey. I think Stan's right there. He's Stan got a Rizzo. Yeah, exactly. He Rizzo's another guy too. I feel like both those guys. They just got to be like, hey, caps out. Let's uh, let's just ball out. Let's just keep hitting. Mm. You know, I think those two guys definitely got to step up here as well most of the time for sure. And Glaber. And Glaber. At one point, he was he was a cornerstone of the future of the Yankees. He's in a bunch of trade talks because he's very inconsistent. He hasn't yeah. been able to duplicate that 2019 season yet. Yep. Yeah, come on, Glaber. Glaber did. But um, yeah. Um, John Collar. Did John Collar come back? Come back. He's back. He is he's back. back. He hit a home run wow. first uh, game back. Yeah, dude, he Trump owns Dodger man. Stadium. Oh he owns God. Dodger Stadium. I saw that that clip about two, three weeks ago from back when he was in Miami, his MVP season. He hit it out of the park over over the really? uh, 
the little roof in left field. What we need, yeah. we need 2017 stands to take over for a little bit right now. It's a, That's what you guys traded him for. 59 home runs. 59 home runs that year. We need that, that is now. insane. I it's, forgot that. Yeah, I dude. saw him win. I saw him win the Derby in San Diego. Oh, that's sick. And then I that's saw awesome. him. I believe. I believe I saw him versus when he was on the Marlins. I'm pretty. I'm, if I'm correct, yeah, he. That was insane. You know who he beat? I forget. It's Todd Frazier. It's yeah, in the second in the second round. Todd Frazier had in, in the last round actually. In the last round. Todd yeah. Frazier. What a wild Todd career. Frazier. What a wild, career. insane. It was a wild career. But, you know, hopefully Stanton, you know, because if you guys don't have Judge, at least you guys have Stanton. And I remember last year when Stanton got hurt, the offense was, you know, slowing down for the Yankees. But once he came back, I feel like the offense definitely, you know, leveled up a bit. You know, got back to where they were in the beginning of the season. So, like I said, if you don't have Judge, at least you got Stanton. You got Donaldson coming back. You know, I mean, hopefully you get 2015 MVP Donaldson. Uh, look. Pipe dream, but I would love it. I would love I mean, it. You never know. I mean, come on. But he's, he's been killing, so I all love the guy. But um, besides that, the Yankee, I mean, you know, the Yankee game, I mean, it was crazy how they had the game yesterday, though. I don't know if you guys yeah. saw that shot yesterday of the game. And Giolito uh, pitched up six and, six and a half, uh, six and two scoreless innings. Yeah, Giolito, he, uh, he had a good game yesterday. Definitely. No hit innings until that got broken up. I guess I think it was Ben Attendi or one of the outfielders that misplays the ball. I think so, yeah. Right. I, tuned, I, 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 I tuned in later that game. I was, uh, was going to say, I was working, so I missed the whole game. Yeah, I, t- I tuned right, in the last you know, former, former Yankee Ben Attendi. Yeah. Um, he would be, he'd but, be exactly uh, what we needed right now. Yeah. And, uh, but for that money, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I, I saw a stat today. He, he has no home runs this year, right? I guess not. I yeah, like and that. like he, he has a good bat average, but he's kind of like you know lacking the extra basic category. But it is what it is. It is what it is. But I, I think uh, Yankees, something else that should be mentioned real quick them. for the Yankees: uh, Carlos Rodon was uh, seen throwing pitches to Donaldson, and I think uh, who was the other guy? Might have been Volpe. I could be wrong, but really. He could be coming back soon too, so I mean, hopefully get him, Judge, and uh, Cortez back sooner than later. Finish off the season strong. Could be good. At this point, I'm not even sure if Carlos Rodon exists. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I haven't seen uh, anything from him since his press conference. Yeah, no, nah, he was throwing pitches to Donaldson. I know that for a fact. Uh, I'll take your at, word for it, man. You're at Yankee Stadium, guy. yeah. I think Talking Yanks posted, but yeah, so could be huge. Hopefully, he's back soon. That would be. We need him in midseason form, though, <laughs> right away. Oh, yeah, we need. Yeah, we need him in midseason form. We can't. We can't be we taking the these. Uh, him getting rocked for three games and be like, oh, he's just uh, easing in, you know. But we'll see what happens. Glad Severino is back. He's looked good. He's, he's looking that good. That Dodgers start, hey. It, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll shake it off. Domingo, Domingo picked him up next day. Domingo. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, anything else before we close out the Yankees? No, I'm good. I think that's it. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Um, so now we definitely got to talk about a player that's been playing lights out right now. Ellie De La Cruz. Was just called game. up. Um. Do the Reds now make any tr- um, any trades uh, in terms of bringing around players to support him? Or Dennis, I'll let you take this one because you sent I'm, this to us. So. I'm hearing, you know, I keep seeing reports that Jonathan India is being shopped around, and he addressed it on a uh, show with Chris Rose, and basically just said like. <laughs> Uh, hey, whatever, whatever they gotta do is what they gotta do. I, I would love to stay here, but I get it. And it's a big uh, one. yeah, uh, he's he, and he's having a good year, Jonathan India. OPS yeah. plus one hundred eight, batting two seventy nine, and then has a one point two WAR already. Rookie of the yeah. year in twenty twenty one, right? Am I am I right on that? Yeah, yeah he won the rookie of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Rookie year, yeah. And then last year he struggled. For most of the season, he picked it up towards the end. But for most of the season, he was he was pretty bad, 
And now he's off to a good start. He leads um, the National League prior to today. I don't know if he played today. In games played with 61. Wow. So hasn't hasn't missed a game yet. He has he has moments where this dude's really shown some promise. Yeah. Like he's a, he's a good player. So I, I don't know what they're going to do with him. I guess the reason why his name is keeps popping up in trade rumors aside from other players on their roster is I guess cuz he has the most value. They would want to we did want to get the trade value for him. But um I don't know what they're going to do, man. They're in a weird spot where I, I genuinely don't know what they're doing. Are they trying to compete? Are they trying to tank? I mean, they're just their ownership is bizarre. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. They're just in a weird spot. Yeah, they really are. Although uh, one player on their team, um. Will Myers just got uh the just reached a ten year mark for his career. So wow! Congratulations to Will uh, Myers. I feel old. Me, I was about to say I feel very old. I remember congrats. when he first got called up for San Diego. Mm. So. Yeah, I remember when he was on San Diego. He would crush the Mets for a little bit. Good for him. Yeah, they got a they got quite a few middle infielders, but um, I guess his natural position, De La Cruz. Was shortstop. He played third base today. Yeah, so, I'm actually looking at their their lineup from yesterday. It was like Jake Fraley was in right field, Matt McLean at shortstop, Indy at two B, uh, De La Cruz at third, Spencer Steer who's been killing it this year left field. You know, I mean, it's a young good team, man. I mean, like, I feel like Indy. You know, he's your 2021 Rookie of the Year. You know, mm. I mean, like, what do you, what would you even get for? I mean, like, I, I know it'd be a good return, but like, man, I feel like you kind of got like a little Atlanta Braston going here. I mean, Hunter Green, Nick Lodolo, uh, it's a good team. I mean, good young team, a lot to be excited about. I mean, if I'm the Reds, man, I mean, India, like you said, he's killing this year. He plays almost every game. He's played every game of that. You know, batting 279, on base percentage 363, slugging 420. I think you got to keep this kid. Keep him, Cruz, Steer. You know, keep, keep the kids together, man. That, that's just. Keep them together, yeah. If, I mean, if there's, if there's, if there's infield, you know, something's clogged there, I guess, but it's crazy, man. If I'm the yeah. GM of the Reds, I'm asking myself, is Jonathan India or. De La Cruz better than Nick Senzel because he's on the 10 day IL right now. And that's why De La Cruz got called up in the first place. And that's why he's playing third base in the first place. So yeah. if you think Senzel is the guy for the rest of this season and you want De La Cruz to get more reps and the minors, he's only 21 years old. Then that, that would be the move would be to send him back down when Senzel is back. <laughs> But yeah. if you really think – and that goes back to what I was saying is I don't know what they're doing. I don't know if they're trying to compete or not. Yeah. The thing with Sentinel is I was huge on this kid back in like oh, 2018, 2019. It's like, oh, he's, he's the next big thing. Everybody was. He just hasn't been <laughs> it. He's 28, Everybody was. he's 28 years old when, you know, it's like, all right, take the upside of Cruz right now. This kid hit a home run array. First hit was a double. I mean – it was. One row before getting out of the park. I'm yeah, it's uh, yeah. Kid, kid's got speed, he's got power. I mean, I don't know. Like I it just hit the row. Be- it just hit the row before making it over the the, the wall. Yeah, he's a beast. I mean, by, to the park, not by the bullpen, feet? by the park. He's he a was beast. 498 feet. That's insane. And he's a free low 115. But and the, the yeah. thing is, if they with these young players on their team. Just real quick before we move on, if they even get a high draft pick, you kind of run into the same problem. Yeah. <laughs> so unless of course they go with the pitcher, but who knows what's available? Whatever. That maybe maybe it's better off. Maybe they're better off actually trying to trying to compete, and you know, maybe you trade Nick Senzel for whatever you can get for him, and just yeah. 
see what you got with these dudes. I don't know. They're, they've been waiting on Senzel a very long time. Yeah. Then, Sometimes you just got to right. cut bait. All right, all right, all right. But um, I guess that settles that. Um, but I guess no. One more question. I I do have to ask one more question about this. Is he? Could he be the next Jose Reyes, or could he be better? I think he could be better. I mean, he's got, you know, Jose Reyes did have some underrated pop, but like Cruz, this guy freaking is just. He's got the power and the speed. I mean, like. His ceiling is definitely above Jose Reyes. He's basically Jose Reyes with like more power, a lot more power. He reminds me of O'Neill Cruz in that's, Pittsburgh. That's the that's exactly who I think he's like. Yep. Even the same, even their swing kind of looked the same. Yep. Their stance at bad, everything. But he's okay. gonna be good. Um, yeah. Yeah, so he's, he's, another, he's a big dude, 6'5", 200 pounds. And he, he hit it off of um, Noah Syndergaard, too. Yeah, I bet you love that. Rough year for him, well, man. Well, the poor you don't got to get into it. I feel bad for the guy. I always like Syndergaard. I want to see him get on the track. Thor, we will man. talk about him, yes. We will talk about him soon. Um, for now, we should talk about, um, you know, speaking of a pitcher, I guess we'll talk about this. Steven Strasburg. <sighs> He may never pitch again. What is up with that? All I, I, I of my that. high school, middle school, um, mainly high school legends, man. I grew up watching. This is just depressing. The grind. Yeah, I, I remember. I loved watching Strasburg. I remember. When, I remember. Strasburg you know, he was sick, yeah. Dude. He was sick. He was the man. number one. Yeah. He was. He was like the Victor Wembanyama of baseball. Yeah. Like when he got called up, it was everywhere. All they talked about on MLB Network. All anybody was talking about online, everything was Strasburg, 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 Strasburg. Yeah. And he delivered. And that's yeah. the, the thing was he was good almost right away and had been good his, basically his entire career aside from these injuries, man. And so, you just go back to that 2019. I'm sorry to cut you off, Nick. No, you're good. The you're 2019 good. World Series run. And they, they paid, they gave Strasburg a few money afterwards, rightfully so, one of the best players in their franchise history. They also gave a lot of money to Patrick Corbin. And the long-term effects, Juan Soto, Scherzer, Turner, gone. Bye-bye. So I have a question for both of you because me and my friends in my group chat are talking about this. Is DeGrom and Strasburg, let's say it's over, you know, here, here and here. Their, their stat sheets or what it is for us for the rest of attorney. Are these guys Hall of Famers? DeGrom uh, and, and Strasburg. I, I don't know. I don't know if DeGrom would be eligible. Does he have 10 years? I think this would have been his 10th season. All right. It, so if he, if he pitched, did he it's very interesting because I, without really looking at the stat sheet, I was like, DeGrom's a Hall of Famer, for sure, far Hall of Famer. Then I really looked at it. I was like, wow. And my answer right now, Personally, I would vote him in, vote him in, but like just just judging the voters, like how they vote people in, I don't think the ground would get in. Because if he, right, if, yeah, if Johan um, Santana's not in, the ground can't go in. I think that's yeah, just the way it is. I think it's gonna be tough. Santana sh- should be in though for sure. I, I agree. I I, I, I would personally in. vote both in. That's that's that would idea. be another hot take for itself. But yeah, I think Degrom. I feel like that's a good question. I, I know both had. I feel like Strasburg had more years. And I feel like the other difference is that Strasburg also has a ring. The Grom has been to a World Series, but he doesn't have the ring. I say Strasburg no to Grom, yes. Fair. And, and this is going to sound insane. Different eras, whatever. If you look at Jacob de Grom, his stats aren't too far off from Sandy Koufax. Which is crazy. And yeah, they played no, around yeah. the same amount of time. He played... They played de- ten years, both of them. Yeah, about ten do, eleven yeah. years. I do so, agree, though. The Grom, I would vote the Grom in though because he has the stats where he was dominant throughout the short period of time. And look, compared to the NFL, look, Terrell Davis, he only played what six seasons, seven. He's in the yeah, Hall yeah. of Fame, you know. So in, in baseball, it's I guess it's different. It's tough, but I feel like nine seasons or ten seasons that that should be enough. He should have some consideration to Grom. I agree. As as a Met fan, I. 
it'd be wrong for me to say, it'd be not wrong. It would be a discredit if I would sit here and say, say no, DeGrom shouldn't be when he has the stats to prove that he should be in the Hall of Fame. Here's, yeah. here's the thing with Strasburg, though. Three All-Stars, a Silver Slugger, World Series, World Series MVP. I didn't say Cy Young. No. Could he, should he have won some, one or two? Who knows? Yeah. But uh, he had the most starts in 2014, most strikeouts, most inning pitch, most innings pitched, and most wins in 2019. But that was the year DeGrom went beast mode. Yeah. So, I don't know. Led the league in home runs per nine for, for a season in 2017. I, I don't know. I, I just think when I think of the great pitchers of the 2010s, I'm going to think Kershaw, Verlander, Granke, uh, Scherzer, Scherzer, yeah, DeGrom, yeah. before I think of Strasburg. And this is going to hurt him because towards the end of his career, he was hurt so much. I might even think Bumgarner, even though I know Strasburg is better, just because yeah. of that 2014 run. When I think of the 2019 Astros, it's weird. I don't think of Strasburg right away. I think of Juan Soto. Yeah. Juan Soto, so, Rendon. Yeah. Scherzer. Trey Turner. Yeah. Like, he didn't have that. Yeah, he deservedly won World Series MVP. Absolutely. But he didn't have that moment that uh, other guys had. I know exactly what you're saying. And like, it's, hard to, it's hard to explain, so I'm glad you do. Yeah, no, I know I know what you're saying. Yeah, it's right. like. Not that he wasn't, but it's like he's not that iconic, flashy name, like you know, like Scherzer or Soto. It's like that. like he didn't have the impact type. He didn't have the impact that the pitchers like Scherzer or Verlander did. Yeah, I I understand what you're trying to say. And no, Cy Young that that would kill him. Yeah, that I would agree. Kill him. So, like personally, my vote would be Degrom, yes, and Strasburg, no. The way I l- think how it's gonna play out. Both probably don't get in. I mean, like, yeah, in all reality, it's it's just tough. I mean, Degrom, I DeGrom is such an iconic name, though, of this generation, so that might get him in. He's got the two Cy Youngs too, so I mean, I hope he really does get in. We'll see. The voters are always like unpredictable. I, I think Degrom gets in because it's not just that he had a good peak in comparison to his contemporaries. He's Literally one of the best pitchers of all time. Just looking at he, he is. I agree 110%. Genuinely one of the best pitchers ever. And, yeah, he didn't have the long career as some other guys, but can you really say with a straight face that Mike Messina was better than him? Yeah, exactly. Can you say Jack Morris was better than him? <laughs> you kind of can't. And yeah. I like Mike Messina a lot. Jack Morris, I don't know enough Jack, about him. Jack him, Morris, but, wow. But yeah, a lot of guys, like a lot of – a lot of guys are in the Hall of Fame that you're going to look at the stats and be like, hey, this isn't even close. Right. Yeah. And he won a Cy Young, and that's a big thing. So, two at that. Rookie of the year as well. I mean, this guy has always been a stud. Almost, almost won MVP, right? He yeah. Probably top five MVP. 2019 or 20, 2018. Yeah, that crazy year. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, um, I guess so. To, to conclude it all, DeGrom, yes. Strasburg, no. But in reality, it might not happen, but. You know, Degrom. I, I feel. I, I feel like out of both pitchers, ha- to have the one happen, to have but... the one to have the real chance would be Degrom. Point blank, said. Point blank and simple. Um. So next topic. Uh, potentials new Angel setup guy Ben Joyce, throwing straight 100 miles per hour heat and striking out Yodan and Altuve. Tell me about this guy, man. This guy sounds like a flashy guy. Yeah. Man. So I I saw this on Instagram actually because you know I really don't watch the Angels that much. I don't have access to it, but um. Yeah, this dude just casually struck out Jose Altuve and, and Ordon Alvarez and, like, kind of made him look silly at the plate. This guy is just throwing straight gas, dude, like 100 miles per hour each pitch. Um, definitely a name to be on the lookout for when it comes to Angels bullpen. Um, I know they've been uh, – the Angels bullpen's been pretty solid overall, uh, closure-wise. Uh I mean, this kid, he's a rookie. Um, I think he's like, what, 24, 25 years old? No, he's 22. Str- 20, he's, 20, he's even younger. He's, 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 young, he's, he's younger than me. He's younger, he's young, than, he's me. younger than all of us. I'm embarrassed. He's younger than me. He's younger than all of us. This guy yeah, throws straight mustard. He's younger than you two. He's, he throws straight mustard, man. Um, but Carlos Estevez, I mean, he's having a pretty good year. Um, 
137 year A, 15 saves. I think he's got the closer roll down pat as of now. But Ben Joyce, man, I mean, his year I got shot up a little bit, but he definitely I got his name bumped up a little bit more on the depth chart in the bullpen. So, I mean, just a cool name to watch out for. Throws mustard. Kid's sick. Yeah, it's a 60 RA, but in what, three innings? Yeah, it's a very short sample size. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Damn, well, this sounds like a guy. I wish this guy was on the Mets. Throws, throws gas, man. I was, yeah, I was impressed. Trading, yeah. I'm like, especially against the Astros, man. Think about those names. Jose Altuve and Ordon Alvarez, man, just making them look silly at the play. It's kind of crazy. And they desperately need him in um, L.A. That's yeah. kind of been their Achilles heel for a while. This season, the bullpen's actually been pretty good. Yeah. But the past couple of seasons, that's been their, it's been rough. their main weakness. Yeah. So. Mm. All right. All right. Um, I know we were talking about the Texas Rangers, but you guys also mentioned the Arizona Diamondbacks. Tell me about that. They're the real deal. Are they the That's real the big question? I think those two teams are kind of similar in terms of, you know, production this year. You know, I mean, like the Rangers, they just be going, you know, they're kind of like the Steve Cohen of the uh, American League in the West at that, like spending big money. These guys got, you know, two years ago, Seeger and Simeon, the Grom, but, you know, you know, that's kind of playing out now, but. Mm-hmm. Put real Chris Young put that team well together in Texas, and then Arizona. I, I don't think anyone saw that. This, I mean, at this point in the year, they took sole possession of first place over the LA Dodgers. They they usually run that division each year in, year out. Um, I I hope it is the real deal. That's all I can really say at this point for the D backs. I just hope it's the real deal. I love Corbin Carroll, um, Zach Gallon. That guy's a, a beast. Uh, he throws straight filth. I hope it's the real deal for them. That I'm liking their roster this year. Yeah, I mean, they're a very balanced roster. Um, shout out to former Yankee and former Met Miguel Castro. Yeah. With the .5 wins above replacement. Good for him. One thing that I've noticed is that their team is very um, dependent on, on who the other team is pitching. They have totally different lineups for left-handed and right-handed pitchers. So, there's times where Geraldo Perdomo is going to play and Josh Rojas is going to play. Then there's other times their guys aren't going to play, yeah. just because they're they're not the you know the handedness doesn't benefit them. So, although I think Perdomo is Perdomo a switch hitter, yeah, he is a switch hitter. But he, I don't know whatever reason I had him on my fantasy team and he would like barely ever played. It felt like but he was <laughs> he was really good. Uh, Lord Escuriel, first year at the club, batting three ten with an OPS he's, of 148. He's killing it. So, I mean, they have a good team. Pavin Smith, uh, not doing so hot, but. Keita Marte is having a nice little comeback here, too. Yeah. Christian Walker, he's having a good year. Offensively, they're, they're doing really good, man. Even Evan Longoria, he's got an OPS plus of 106. Yeah. So. I mean, they, they got dudes, and then their pitching staff isn't bad either. Zach Gallen, obviously. Um, well, what are some of the pitching staff? Merrill like? Kelly. Merrill Kelly. Um, starter's not that good, but when you have a bullpen like this, Miguel Castro, Kyle Nelson, Andrew Shafane, Kevin Ginkle, never heard of him, but he's having a pretty good year. Uh, <laughs> not going to lie to you. So, yeah. Joe Mantiply. They got, they got, they got a nice little roster here. Uh, no, it's not sustainable. <laughs> yeah, they got a nice little team. Yeah, no, come on. Um, the Dodgers are the Dodgers, and there's always these teams that start off really well and peter out. And I- yeah, it's pretty similar to what we're talking about earlier with the Astros. Like the Dodgers are just a thorn in that division, you know. For the other teams, they just they run that division year in year out. I mean, you look at the Dodgers roster. I mean, come on, like. They're bound to win the division. It's just it's, it's in the pudding. You know, you can't go only, wrong. It's only a two game difference. Yeah, it's gonna be back and forth if that. And the know. Dodgers are on a four game losing streak, so it's only a matter Mets of time that turns game. around. Yeah. Mets are on a five game win streak. Uh, five game losing streak. I wish I would say five game win streak. Yeah, the Rays are on a five game winning streak. Marlins six game. All right, we're getting. 
we're getting distracted here. <laughs> uh, um, Luis Ab- um, Arreyes. 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 Love this dude, Arreyes. bro. Brandon, this- buddy, let me ask you something. Do you remember preseason when I said he was a better contact hitter than Jeff McNeil? And if you've ever yeah, friends in our yeah. group chat, don't oh, know, yeah. I, I would have like I cussed out their mothers. W- Unbelievable. Was this when we were doing the fantasy the fantasy baseball draft? Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I said remember, I was, I Luis Arias yeah. is a better contact hitter than Jeff McNeil. And the whole world stopped. Uh, I couldn't believe it. And now he's hitting 462 games into the season. First time since 2008 when Chipper Jones, Hall of Famer. Chipper Jones did it. <laughs> and before that, Paul O'Neill. Uh, Paul O'Neill. Paul uh, O'Neill hit 400. Fun fact, I actually have his, you know, let me let me see if I can get the bobblehead, actually. Oh. But Arias, man, I mean, you know, bad in champ last year, bad in, for the AL, and then bad in 401 this year. He, he's proven, man. He's proven. Dennis, I mean, if I was in that group chat with you guys, I, I would have been on board with you. I've watched him bat against the Yankees a bunch of times. I mean, come on. Guy, guy just gets sing- – he gets – I mean, he, he gets some extra base hits, but the guy hits singles for days. He's just like – he's kind of bringing back that like Tony Gwynn, Wade Boggs, you know, you type. Wow. You love it. It, it, it brings such a much, much good dynamic for baseball, you know. It's not always home runs. Yeah. I was actually Great. wrong. That was not Paul O'Neill. That was actually Tina Martinez. Tina Martinez. Yeah. I, had, no. so I, I, I got to correct myself on that. But um, he's, he's, he's doing it with the third lowest exit velocity in the league, and he still has a higher slugging percentage than Mike freaking Trout. That's crazy. <laughs> That's nuts. That's crazy. Yeah. That's nuts. Courtesy to SNY for saying that on the broadcast earlier. Mm, I'm not thank you, SNY. Um, that is crazy. Look, dude. Unreal, the Scrappy yeah. Marlins, very, very unreal. Here. Scrappy yeah, and Marlins. You just oh, said the Marlins are eight Jeff and two in their last ten, three games out behind the Braves. I mean, oh, something to take note of. Bite. These fish bite. <laughs> so, so because yeah. I went there earlier this season. Went to a heat yeah. game earlier this season. Went to the Marlins stadium. Look at that. Yeah, so, man. Look at you. You get you getting everything down there, damn. Pitbull. But. Arise, you know, leading the league. Maybe we get a free Pipple concert now, yeah. And then that's the next thing, yeah. <laughs> Arise, leading the league in hits, bad average on base percentage, OPS plus. It's, he's a beast, man. He's a beast. I love, this, dude. Mm. I love contact hitters so much because it's exactly what I wasn't when I was growing up. <laughs> I respect it so much. Dennis only hit dingers, man. Dude, I didn't. I don't even think I ever hit one in game. <laughs> I'm serious. I bro. almost, I almost did. I almost did. I, I was, I saved our team from uh, getting eliminated in the playoffs in Little League. There you go. Clutch, uh, I, I think money. if we lost that game, the next game would have been a had to be like a winner, winner or a loss or go home type game. So wow. I, you know, that's a, that's another story for another day. But uh, <laughs> I was the type of player where before we get back into, I was the type of player where I got hit by a pitch and I was never the same. I had a David Wright type moment. <laughs> That happened to me when I was in third grade. I got hit in the chest protect. I got, I got hit Ooh. right. You're on my team. Yeah. You're on my team with that year, buddy. Oh, in, in the chest? chest? I watched that chest. happen. I watched that happen. I, I was like, holy moly. I was like. I think like, it, I, I don't remember if it hit me sh- square if it hit my bat and off. It, I, I don't it, know. Hit, it hit straight. No, it hit straight in your chest. I don't know how that happened. Open stance. Open stance. Open stance. I, don't how that, I don't know how that could have happened. I saw that happen live. Right, I was like, "Wow!" I mean, you got right up. You, you got because I think it hit your, your. You had like something in your. Um, yeah, the chest you, had, protector. you had a plate. You had a chest protector, and so yeah. I think that it hit it directly there. Oh, it did. But, it scratched it. I remember it, it scratched damn. the chest protector. I think that was yeah, but um, but you're not. Head. I had my yeah. I, I think I know who was pitching too. I yeah, had my uh, yeah, dude, I had my David Wright. Mo- I had my David Wright moment where I mean I, I was hit right in the neck. And I was never the same. I was scarred, but it didn't stop me from saving our team in 2012. It didn't stop it there. I but a, um, I was a walk machine. I got walked every game. <laughs> I think I was, it, just, I, I was just a big kid. Kids were like terrified to pitch to me. I got hit and walked every game. <laughs> I'm serious. We did have a couple. We had a couple I kids had a couple that would hit some dingers. We would have a kids that would hit some dingers. I'm not gonna lie, dude. I know exactly who you're thinking of. There are two kids that didn't even go to our high school. They lived in the neighborhood, but they went to Catholic school. They were like best friends, dude. Those I kids know. hit nukes. 
<laughs> I know one who you talk. I know one who you're talking about. I haven't seen. I wow, know you're I haven't. About, I'm thinking, I forgot about remember, that. Kid. Do you remember? I'll just say his name. I don't know him well enough. He's not going to see this. Pat Fullerton. Do you remember him, the big kid? And then obviously <laughs> Najee Waller was Najee Waller. Najee, yep, Najee Waller. That's the other name I was thinking of. Najee. Unbelievable, greatest athlete I've ever seen. But yeah, he, Patrick he's a good Fullerton kid, was the he, other one. Oh. He's a he's a good he's a he's a good kid, Najee. I haven't I haven't, I haven't seen him in a long time. If I if I haven't talked to uh, Katone, I gotta I gotta ask him how he's doing. His, um, his family was great too, but Patrick Fullerton, that kid hit. I think he my was on my God. team. If I'm correct, I don't that know. Kid, one of them went he to hit it onto the he hit it onto the Seaford Oyster Bay once. I'm kid, I'm not kidding. He Wait. Hit it. He oh hit it. oh, from that, that park, right? Yes. It was on. I it was unbelievable. These Knicks looking at us. Yeah, like, yeah, I know. We're telling them about our Little League stories. Good times, man. Good times. Good times. These times. were good great times. times these, were very, these were very great times. I'm not going to lie, Dennis. Yeah. You're just looking back at these moments. We really did have some great Little League moments. I'm not going to lie. Oh, all I, baseball I, league, all grade. Like the people below. And like I'm saying, like all town. Like, yeah, it was just a great league. Ready for this? Want to hear a moment? Game-saving home run robbery. There you go. Really? It would have been a walk-off home run, and I robbed it and reeled it back in. Okay. The kid, the kid brought it up to me when I was in high school. He still brought it up. He's like, I'll never forget that. I was like, yeah, you won't. Me neither. Nah, for me, I know you I guys weren't ball. there. Yes. I know you guys weren't there, but uh, 2011, you know, this is like storybooks and out of a movie, man. I was playing second base as a lefty, and we're in the World Series. Um, I think it's like a runner on third. Lefty batter up, so I was like, "Oh man, this ball is gonna come to me, man." I'm like, "Oh, oh, this, I, I don't want this to happen, man." You know, it's the World Series, line drive. And the sun was going down. The umpire almost called the game because it, it went to extra innings. Everything, line drive, whole team dog piles on me, man. That was wow. like amazing. 2011 White Sox. If you boys are listening, Joey Mazzella, Robert Dickerson. If you guys are listening to, send them, it to them. Great memory. Great memory. Screw Great it. Memory. You know, they're they're gonna, was, gonna see uh, Bad and Chan. They're gonna see Bad and Chan. We're talking about they're, some they're gonna tune guys. in. Show them this time limit too. A minute set like an hour seventeen. Yeah, and they're gonna be like, like they're gonna be Shout like, why is Nick sending me this? And why is he they're gonna be like, why is he telling me to watch an hour seventeen? And then there you go. Like, <laughs> Shout out to two thousand eleven White Sox. I guess I'll tell, I'll tell my story quick before we get into the next topic. Crazy, we're talking about Luis uh, Arias, and then we get into Little League Baseball. Yeah. <laughs> right up. <laughs> so I remember it was 2012, and like I said, this was a do. If we didn't, if we lost this game, it would have been like the next game would have been like a elimination type game. But I remember there was a runner on second and third. I was up. It was two outs. So I think it was maybe 0-2 in the count, and I was always the type of hitter. I was like on and off switch because, like I said, I was kind of I was kind of scarred, and um. You know, but that you know, that's on me. Like you know, I sh- should be over to overtake those fears. You know, so at that moment, I was like, "All right, I'm gonna hit it." I wound up, I got ready, I take a swing, and so like I said, I was that type of hitter where you know, like I said, not that I was automatic out. I'm not gonna say that. You know, I'm not gonna trash eleven year old buddy, but <laughs> you know, the out the coach made the inf- the outfield come in, knowing that I don't they didn't know I was gonna hit it over them. And that's exactly what happened. I, I hit it. I had no idea what was going on or where the ball was. All I hear is people screaming at me to run. And everyone's going nuts. Everyone's going bonkers because, like I said, I hit the ball. And I remember I ran to second. <laughs> and I remember I did the Jose race where he used to, he used to always do that every time he got a double. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> and I think we tie, I tied the game, if I'm correct. And I'm not going to say the name of the pitcher because if you ever saw this, you would get very mad at me. But I – he did walk off crying. I'm not crying. He did walk off crying. I remember hearing about this in school. Really? I remember hearing really? about that. Do you really? People were talking about. Yeah, people were talking about it. I remember that. And the second yeah, thing, the, the, don't sell yourself short, Brandon. You saw them moving in. You said blood. You saw blood in the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah Michael they Jordan. Had I took that personally moment. You stepped in, ready to go, and just hit a nuke. That's exactly what happened. You didn't scud over those guys. You got on second base and said, "Yeah, move in now." That's what you said. That's I exactly. Made, what I made. I made the pitch. Yeah, I made. I made, I made the pitcher cry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then wow, the pitcher good. walked off. You pointed at him and said, "Go grab some bench twerp." Yeah. That's exactly what happened. I know. It's you crazy. Know. Wow. Yeah. You, you remember? You remember the story? It was big. All jokes aside, I do. I all jokes aside, I do remember people talking about it. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, the the um the green brandino struck in uh Pickin Park and <laughs> in... <laughs> Brett, that is um the birth yeah, of the brandino. The bear for the brandino and no one knew about it. Honestly, no one knew about it at the time. All right. So um speaking of the I guess one of this person would be want to be the brandino, he would be the great Nick Castillo Castellanos. He is off to a red hot start now in June. So I know the Mets played him recently in Cincinnati. But uh, what can you tell me about his red hot start in June? Dennis, you're right about the Phillies. So I think I'm going to let you uh, take this one away, man. He needs to see a chiropractor for carrying this offense. Um, wins above replacement 1.8. He's not a great defender, so you know where most of it's coming from. Batting average 315, which is great, except the guy's hitting 400 this season. Uh, 75 hits. Seven home runs. He hadn't hit a home run since August going into this season. And then he hit seven this year. 75 hits. I mean, OPS plus 134. He's just having a really good year, man, offensively. Then he started off kind of slow, but it just, it's not stopping. Right. And okay. 20 doubles already at this point in the season. He had 27 all of last year. He has 20 doubles already. He's on That's the Phillies, nuts. correct? Yeah. Yeah, and, I, um, I don't know. I said it right. I know he was on the Phillies. He is a doubles monster, man. Doubles monster. Oh, I remember, he's a guy, he's a I remember guy, Rob, yeah. closely following his doubles uh, total in 2019. 58 doubles in 2019. I was, I was so sure he was going to beat the record of 67 set by – some old timer baseball guy, I forget his name, <laughs> Sam something. You sure you can Google it, but um, right, sixty seven is the most yeah. ever hit in a season. I was like, he's gonna beat sixty seven. He hit fifty eight that year. Doubles machine. Love Castellanos. Monster year mm. in Cincinnati, two thousand twenty one. A little bit. Yeah, of a step I, back I know he was on the Reds, year, but this year he's he's back up to par with what I know to what this guy can do. So. I don't know. He robbed, uh, yeah. He robbed Nimmo, uh, one of the games of a uh, extra base hit. So yeah, he's been great in the outfield. He's been great defense, and I I remember he was the Cincinnati Red. That yeah, monster. it was um, it was Earl Webb had sixty seven. Earl Webb, okay, Earl Webb, yeah. But I mean, Nick, Alec Bohm has gotten hurt. He was a big part of their offense early on. Um, no Reese Hoskins for the whole season. Yeah. Brandon Marsh has cooled off exponentially. Trey Turner has struggled. Schwarber has struggled. JT Realmuto has struggled. So who who's it up to? Nick Castellanos. And he's delivered. Every single time, man. Every single time. And um, Drew Ellis, he stepped up for them now, too. And uh, this is what's got to happen. This is what I said last week on this program. If if the guys, if the Schwarbers and the Realmutos and the Turners, they're not going to step up. Other guys have to. And it's Castellanos is carrying the flag for them right now. And Turner, Rio Mudo, Schwarber, they're starting to get hot. And when this Phillies lineup gets hot, pff, might be the best in the league. I'm not even kidding. Yeah. Just coming off a World Series appearance, I mean. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, that's – It's a feast or famine lineup. And to have a model of consistency like Castellanos goes a long way, man. Goes a long way. Puts the ball in play. Yeah. Really good. All right, all right. So this player I know is going to set up. I know it's going to. We already talked about him earlier, but we do. I feel like we should elaborate more on why he is worth what his asking price is being asked for for this particular team. Now the Royals have set a role this Chapman. You know they set a price for the, the trade, and it's it's pretty high. Now I know they want a high caliber prospect, or if I'm correct, a reliever, right? Or dump some yes, cash. that sounds about right from what I heard. Yeah. So, do you think are the Royals kind of going? I mean, good for them. I mean, they really did a good thing picking him up, not knowing what he was going to be. I mean, they had kind of had the idea or that he had this potential, and now he's wanted now, and so they kind of saying, "Hey, you didn't want him then, you want him now. That's what you're going to get. It's what you got to give up." Do you, Do you think this is like a do you think this was ultimately like a win so far for the Royals? Unless they don't, you know, get what they're asking for. Uh yeah, I mean, 
you know, Chapman has been look. He's had he had a pretty rough end with his Yankees tenure. He's been doing solid over of the Royals. I think that's a win itself right then and there. But I mean, if they can get what they're asking for, I don't think they're gonna get a high prospect. I don't think that's gonna happen. If they can get like a young reliever with upside from somebody, you know, and uh, a team in a more win now mode picks him up, I think that's a huge W for the Royals right there. Mm-hmm. I mean. Okay. You know, Chapman's not the future for the Kansas City Royals. So, I mean, whatever you can get for him at that point. You know, this guy was, you know, the Yankees pretty much kicked him to the curb just less than a year ago. I mean, it, it was a good sign by the Royals if this keeps up, you know, he keeps up this production and they get something for him. It's not bad. Mm. This is, He's been exactly what they wanted. Yeah. Uh, Take him as a reclamation project, kind of like a pump and dump. They know look, nobody's if you're a bad team and you have an aging reliever, there's absolutely no value. Less value. You lose value on the asset. So this is exactly what it, what he's what they've wanted. And look, he's not blowing anybody away. He only has a few saves on the season, only two. But two nine five ERA, twenty three games, thirty five strikeouts, seven hits. Uh, excuse me, seven earned runs, excuse me, um, eight total. But I don't know who who else is really in the market aside from the Mets for a really top-shelf reliever right now. I'm sure somebody is, and I'm just kind of forgetting about it, but I, I don't know. I, I really don't know what they're going to do with them because, I mean, he has zero value for them. Zero. Mm, right. Yeah. Because you're not going to win. You're the last place. And once again, say it with me, kids the worst division <laughs> in baseball. Yep. You're in last place. Mm, you're okay. 13 games back from first place. Lord knows you're not getting a wild card from that division. So I do, you got to do it. You got to do what you got to do. And yeah. If I was them, I would do it early. Do it early. Yeah. He's been good enough to so really. High. Make, yeah. He's been fine. Sell high. What are you holding on to him for? Like yeah. Zach Greinke was drafted by the Royals. His career is yeah, more it, or it, less kind of it, over. It, it's kind of like McCutcheon to the Pirates, you know. Right. It, it, it's a feel good, you know. Hey, franchise guy, whatever. Right. It's wrapped. The sun he, is setting, but he, he can't put a price on that. But yeah, yeah. Chapman, on the other hand. You know he's trade bait. Got to be. It, it, that's the only reason why they signed him. And I don't know if people are concerned about some of the off-field stuff. I don't know if some people are concerned about the notion that he kind of quit on the Yankees. I don't know. But somebody should take him. And look, yeah. I'm looking right at the Mets. I'm looking right at them. That's, yeah. that's kind of what I'm thinking. And but, it's like you said, right, Dennis, you know, it could be his big, you know, for – on air purposes, I'm not gonna say it, but it could be a huge FU moment to the Yankees going to the oh, okay. other team in New York, the other side in Queens, and showing off, you know, maybe uh string together some great performances. Yeah, you never know. That that that's what would be, you know, the Yankee way right there. Aaron Hicks is balling out in Baltimore right now. Like, come on, like oh, the yeah. Yankees always get clowned in the end. That's pretty I'm, okay, I'm okay with Aaron Hicks balling out. I yeah, really no, like- I mean good good for the guy, but it just makes the Yankees look like a, a donkey. <laughs> you know, just like, I could care less. I remember when everybody was saying that about Joey Gallo, and then he was worse with the Dodgers than he was with the Yankees. Yeah. Hard to believe that's even possible. He's worse with the Dodgers. But another guy I remember, was, you know, on the uh, trade rumors down in Kansas City, Salvador Perez. I mean, yeah. he's a generational catcher right here. And, you know, I'm not to sound like a homer, but – I think the Yankees should be all, all at the, all in on that. In my opinion, I think he would bring another great leadership presence to the Yankees. And I mean, I love Trevino to death, but him as the backup catcher to Salvador Perez, uh, I, I kind of love that. I agree, and it's not going to happen. It probably won't. Yeah. And I say it's not going to happen because if they w- were in the market for a catcher, because they would have to give up an asset, then why yeah. not just play Ben Vordvet, who raked? Yeah, who did, raked. did very well. So it, it isn't going to happen. But yeah, you're right. It would fit perfectly. 
And um, yeah, what are you gonna do? Yep. Mm. Huh? What are you gonna do? That's this is how we roll. So uh, the A is now facing issues with relocating, with politicians from both California and Nevada trying to prevent the move. <sighs> this does not sound good. What, what? How could it possibly get worse for the Oakland Athletics? This is definitely does not. I mean, could it get possibly worse? I guess no, that's just because a- they have an incompetent owner. And you know what? I'll pull it up right now because I'm a history major, not an English major. Definition of incompetence. Let's find this. Incompetence. Competence. Oh, I guess I'm incompetent. I can't even spell the damn thing. <laughs> not having or shown the necessary skills to do something successfully, according to dictionary.com. I'll repeat that. Not having or showing the necessary skills to do something successfully. Does that not describe John Fisher and his tenure with the A's? Every other owner could figure this out. Every other owner could keep possums out of their freaking stadium. Every yep. other owner could keep sewage out of dugouts. Professional dugouts. Every other owner could keep people from making sweet, sweet love in the upper deck. <laughs> Oh my god. Every other owner could figure it out, man. Everybody else. Yeah, but I don't get it. And then you screw over the city of Oakland and now you come you go to the to, to Vegas. They're looking at you screw over Oakland. What are they thinking? Yeah, we don't want this here. We don't want this here. And if now is the time for politicians or whatever from Nevada to really get revved up. That would be the time because look at the Golden Knights. So now you could look at the revenue and what not a championship team is, but they know the A's aren't going to get there. They're not going to spend that money. They're not. So that that is what it is. And I'll, I'll just kind of talk about the issue was a um, letter from Congresswoman Barbara Lee said the city of Oakland and Alameda County have been home of the A's for five and a half decades. Multiple generations of Oaklanders have grown up identifying with the team's dogged efforts and hard-earned triumphs. The A's organization adds significant, tangible economic benefit to our region, but as important is the scene of, of the sense of unique shared cultural identity. And then she goes on and on in this letter to Rob Manford, the commissioner of the sport, and basically says, you guys... The difference in the antitrust lawsuits and whatnot is the relationship between the the stadium and the city. But you guys aren't holding up your end of the deal. We have all these options that you guys aren't getting back to us on, which you're supposed to by rule, and you're not doing it. And now there might be a um, now Congress is get might get involved. Just tell the guy to sell the freaking team, man. Yep. Tell him to sell. If I'm an owner, it looks bad for the whole sport. Dude, this is Oakland. Like, this whole A's are poor nonsense is just so stupid. I've said it before on this program and on my college radio show. Saying the Oakland A's is a small market team, but saying that the San Francisco Giants is a large market team. It's like saying the Rangers are a large market team, but the Islanders are a small market team. It's, it's BS. They're actually, okay. the Islanders and the Rangers, their stadiums are actually further apart than Oakland Coliseum and Oracle Park. Insane. They're a bigger market than the Cardinals. They're the eighth biggest market in, in the U.S. sports. Such a rich history too. I mean, it's it's it's, it's, it's such a disservice to the city of Oakland and, and the fans. It's horrible. Anything they, they just does not deserve a team. Just doesn't deserve a team. Doesn't deserve it. And I remember I saw a, a video of um, Rosenthal, uh, the reporter. Yeah, I forget his first name. Rosenthal. Eric. No. The guy from baseball, Kevin. Kevin Rosenthal? I forget yeah, his name. I, I there's see so his many face. Rosenthal's. I, I see his face correct. vividly. He looks a lot like my uncle. I see my face, his face vividly, Rosenthal. But um, Ken Rosenthal. 
And, Ken Rosenthal. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And he was talking about like how come? Oh, oh I said Ken. Wait, I did. I was saying Ken. My bad. You guys. Oh my god, I forgot my mic was muted. <laughs> <laughs> why was he? Um, like he he had a video of why does Rob Manford and Major League Baseball keep defending this? How come they're trying to make this go through and they know damn well the guy's no idea what he's doing owning a team? I wish I could tell you. Sorry. It's, I don't get it. Everybody else could figure it out. I don't get it. I don't get it. Now politicians are getting involved and Buddy and, oh, well, Nick, yeah, you, all three of us have seen it with the Islanders when they left Nassau Coliseum and politicians were getting involved in this one and that one. And sometimes that could be a negative, like in that case with leaving the Coliseum. And then other times it's a positive because the Nevada, the Nevada legislator doesn't, they're not budging. They said, your limit is, I think, $250 million, and public funding is their limit. And the A's want them to pay almost 100 more than that. For what? Yeah. For what? It's like basically money laundering what the A's are doing right now. <laughs> they know damn well they're not putting together a good team. Yep. They haven't in 20 years. Look at all the star players. They've had just walk for nothing yep. or trade for 25 cents on the dollar. Unbelievable. Very right? unbelievable. It blows my mind. I know I know. this is the kind of stuff I like in sports. I don't know if you guys do. But no, yeah, no. Nah, I, I definitely The culture and economics, I love. But yeah, it's. Uh, I well, just keep seeing more and more news about this subject every single day. I know. So, you know and good. here we are to, here we are to cover it. Um, one more Great topic before great. we wrap up the show. Um, there were three Korean players now under scrutiny because they went out for drinks two nights during the World Baseball Classic. They, uh, the former Cardinal Kim Kwon Han has been removed from the SSG Landers active roster in the KBO because of this. What are y'all thoughts on this? It's just – so when I first read it face value, I didn't even know the details. I figured nobody they were celebrating, you know, a couple of days before a game or something. I'm not too sure. So I was like, that's a little hard. But then I read into it. And these three guys, they were drinking like the night, like drinking heavily, like drinking binges, like before the game the, the next day. Like, come on, man. You're representing on, the man. country. You got to be professional. You know, you're showing up pretty much on over to the World Baseball Classic, you know, like, and, you're not, and they lost. And I'm pretty sure I was watching a video. The nights they drank the next, the, the game at, the game the next day, they they lost. They got creamed. So it's like, yeah. uh, it's just kind of a boneheaded decision. I thought it was an interesting uh, story to talk about. But you know, like I said, you represent your country at the at the biggest stage in baseball, probably throughout the whole world, and you're getting hammered uh, the night before a game. It's just kind of yeah. It doesn't ridiculous. doesn't sound too smart. No, I agree. Yeah. I basically I mean, mean Dennis Kramer, yeah. I don't know what you want me to say. No. Me, yeah, me and Dennis kind of both on the agree one with hand, you. On the one hand, yes, you shouldn't get hammered before a game. I know. Who would have thought? <laughs> but on the other hand, it's like to lose your job over it. I'm kind of in the same boat. I don't I, know. Like, that's a little. Because I'm in the same well, boat because you know, I was if like. Matt Harvey you know. didn't get, if Matt Harvey didn't get in trouble, then. I mean, Matt Harvey did get in trouble, but later on for other stuff. But, I mean, Matt Harvey was partying it out in Manhattan, and next thing he was expected to go on the city field mound, thinking he was part of the 86 Mets. Yeah, but, like, you know, um, like, you know, I agree with Dennis. Yeah, my, yeah. first, my first initial reaction was, really? That That's how they lost their job? It is a bonehead decision of the day, but, man, like – yeah, and like know. I said, I'm not con- uh, like I said, like, like I'm saying, you know, like it was Matt what Matt Harvey was doing. That's why he's no longer in the MLB. He was partying it on too hard. Like I said, these guys. I mean, I think to lose your job over that, yeah, I think it's maybe should get suspended, some disciplinary. I think it's definitely a little bit going too much. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, you, they definitely should have known better. They should have been a little bit responsible because you know you have a big job. You know, pitching in the KBO, you know, it's something, you, you know, that definitely should take serious. I just don't see – it's like going out the night before like an SAT or like a big – not an SAT, but it's like going out before yeah. a night of a big test. You know, yeah, you know, you, this is something big for school, something big in your grade, and you're going out. You're not taking anything serious, and you're just 
saying, eh, what the heck? It's what, what is this? You know, that's kind of, I, also, I mean, I also think it's kind of a culture thing as well. Cause it is the KBO. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm not Korean by any means, but like, I'm, I'm assuming like drinking and stuff like that. It's kind of a little more looked down upon in their culture than it is in ours. Like, you know, I'm not talking about the NFL, but like, you know, these dudes, Adrian Peterson, and Alvin Kamara still got their jobs after the, the yeah, Tyree Kill, horrible, yeah. horrible acts, you know? So it's yeah. like, it could be just a culture clash right there if uh, we react to it, but it's, yeah, I, I think that's what it is. Cause to me, this is like not a big deal. It, it really and is. Granted, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I was working the past two days. I was working both days. I haven't really read the report. I'm going to be honest. But I mean, were they were they running around with like hookers or drugs or something? Like, if not, um, who cares? Drugs, I don't think so. If I oh. remember correctly, they said something about a waitress. Uh, I wouldn't say a hooker, but like something. Were they were they like getting creepy with her or? I think so. Could be okay. wrong. Don't All right. Want, if don't want, case, don't want it. Don't want to confirm anything on that. But yeah. if hypothetically that is what happened, then I would get it. But yeah. if it if it's just right. getting drunk and embarrassing the team it's like okay that sucks but like spend the guy right. five games exactly all right. Yeah. all right so um i think that basically settles it for the show for episode four of batman and chad and like I say thank you guys for tuning in this was definitely i think it's the best episode so far i agree i felt you know good energy a lot, i wasn't a lot of ground you know, was covered a lot of ground was covered yeah i definitely agree we got to talk about some old little league you know baseball memories <laughs> Yeah, I do want to end to the story. Yes, I did tie the game, and I do want to conclude that we did win it, and we did end up winning the World Series that Little League season. I want to what get to that? I was the Giants. I was with Catone and Jared Alton. Jared Alton was on that team too. That's when he played baseball too. Um, but yeah, I just want to say it was definitely a great show. Obviously, I love doing the show with you guys. This is great. Episode four. Here, clap it up. Episode four straight four. You know, four weeks. A new hope. Episode four. Yeah, yeah. Man, a new hope. I just want to say hopefully, thank you to everybody. Hopefully, they do for, hope for Oakland, right? Hopefully, hopefully the, the fan know, base hopefully. deserves it. Legendary franchise. They're just owners horrible. So owners horrible, yes. But all I gotta say, but to end it on that note, Oakland's owner horrible. But you know, uh, Ron Manfred, do something. But for now, all I gotta say is thank you to everybody for tuning in to Bad and Chatting. Um, my name is Brandon Jordan Natali. I'm here with. Nicholas File and Dennis Dewey. And thank you, everybody, and I hope everybody has a fantastic Wednesday. And please, everybody, please stay safe. If you live in the Eastern Region in New York, whether you're in New York, in Boston, um, your Maine, your Connecticut, or your New Jersey, or your Delaware, anywhere in the Eastern Region where the smoke is affecting you, uh, please be safe. Try to stay indoors for the time being. If you're gonna go out, you know, aside, make sure it's to the destination you're going where you're going indoors. Um, definitely look up, you know, like I said, I'm not an air quality guy, but like I said, try to do your best to stay safe and make sure you're not breathing in the air because the air quality right now is insane. Am I right, fellas? Oh, it's crazy. 110% yes. is disgusting out there. Yeah, so definitely make sure you stay safe until the air quality is safe and non-hazardous. That's all, and that's all I got to say. Thank you to everybody for tuning in to Bandit Chat, and we are out. <laughs>